All right, welcome back to Photoshop. And today we're gonna really take an in-depth look at masks inside of Photoshop. Now, Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw both now use masks. So this is kind of a cross-platform. Everything is using a mask. The big issue that people run into is no, you cannot use your mask at this point from Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw inside of Photoshop. But today we're really gonna focus on the mask in what you can do with it. And truthfully, it's the key to doing just about everything inside of the program. So we have this picture here of this pelican. And there are two completely different ways, basically, to make a mask. One, is to use a selection and your selections are over here. So we've got the lasso tool and whatever is below that. We've got what is new and worked really well, your object selection tool. Right here, we've got our quick selection tool. We could use the magic wand. You could also come up here to select and you've got color range, focus area, subject and sky and select and mask. Now you can see because I'm in the object selection tool and I'm hovering over something, it is making a selection, all right? Now, by just making a selection and then left clicking, it's simply going to load that selection using your dots. And by default, it is not making a mask. To turn a selection into a mask, you would need to come on over here and click on your mask button, which is down here on the bottom. And we would click and then bam, just like that, you would see it creates a mask of this image. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command Z and get back out of that. Now, just because you can click on these different objects, that doesn't always mean you are done with what you need to do. So what we're gonna do is, we'll come here to the object selection tool, I'm gonna to hover over the penguin, and you can see everything in this pink color is what it's going to select. Now for some reason it's missing these areas, all right? That's not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is click that and that's gonna make a selection. Now, one thing that you need to do when you're making a selection a lot of times is to refine that selection. So it's done it and it's done a pretty good job of picking out these areas. However, you can see it didn't get all these little bits of hairs and it missed this little area up here even though it did make the selection in the end. It's not perfect. So to refine a selection, there's only one thing that you can do it with, and that is select and mask up here. So we're gonna click select and mask. And just so you know, you can actually use that selection tool right here. So there's our object selection tool and some of the other selection tools. So if you wanna go straight into select and mask to make your selection, that's definitely something you can do. So the first thing we're gonna do is come up here and click refine hair. Because even though this isn't hair, it's feathers, and, and basically Photoshop looks at it the same way. So we'll go ahead and click that, and you can see it got a lot more of those little bits that we didn't have there. It didn't do such a great job in here. Now, if you want to try to refine it even more, we have an old tool, which is called the Refine Edge Brush, so we can click on that. We can slide over here. This is our edge detection. I'm just gonna use smart radius and let the computer pick what it thinks the radius should be. And then the way this works is I just make my brush just a little bit bigger than the area that I wanna select. And you'll notice my brush is going to be half on the feathers and half on this kind of red area on the outside. And what I'm doing is just saying, hey, this is the location I want you to look at and try to do a better job of making a selection. And bam, just like that, you can see that is insane. That is so much better. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna reduce my brush size a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just going over that same area. We're not gonna go the whole way because it did a pretty good job. And here, try to pick this up. And look, if you do something and it doesn't do such a great job, hit Command Z. So right there, it didn't pick that area. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And we'll go out there. And you can see, yep, it's picking that area up and doing a lot better job. And then I'm just going to 
reduce my brush size and we're going to come over here and try to get a better selection on the feathers there. Here, get that little bit. Then we're going to come over here and get this little bit. See if this can work there. Hmm. It didn't do a great job there. So we're just going to undo that. Look, it's a tutorial. I'm not going to spend tons of time getting it. But yeah, it, it did a pretty good job in general now of making a selection on this image. Now, when you're working in select and mask, you have the option to output as a selection, a layer mask, new layer, a new layer with a layer mask, a new document, or a new document with a layer. In this case, I'm just going to use a layer mask. I'm gonna hit okay, and boom, just like that, it is created this selection. All right, so for the next step, basically I didn't wanna select the background out in this image, even though that's what we did do, that's okay. I'm going to do something that's odd, all right? So I'm gonna do a color overlay, and it's only going to be used so you can see how the image is being affected. So if I come here and I click on this, we're gonna to go to solid color. And we'll just pick a bright red and that looks pretty good. And we're going to change the blending mode here to color. So basically anywhere this is at, it's going to make this weird red color. So in this case, you'll notice it automatically created a mask. And when a mask is white, it's going to apply at 100% whatever the adjustment is. In this case, it's red. If I make that mask black, it's gonna not apply any of it. So if I hit Command I to make this black, you can see it's not doing anything. And what we're gonna do down here, I'm just gonna disable this layer mask because we don't actually wanna use it on this image. So now you can see anywhere that's white and in this mask right here, if I, if I select it, anywhere that's white, gonna show 100% of whatever this is to the left of it. In this case, it's a red color overlay. So if I turn this back on, you can see wherever there's white, it made the red color overlay. Wherever there's black, not applying it at all. Black hides the adjustment, white shows it. What's more important is white shows 100% of that adjustment, black hides 100% of it. So you're not seeing it all. With a mask, you can actually use grays. So if I was to apply a 50% gray mask, it would show 50% of this red, not at 100%, but at 50%. So what does that mean? And this is also gonna be the second way to apply a mask. So I'm gonna do this manually. So I'm gonna come over here to this brush. I'm gonna grab my pointer and I'm gonna make this around percent so I've got my brush I've got about 50 percent gray I need to remove this selection so I'm gonna hit command D and then I'm just gonna come in here and you'll see that I've painted in 50 percent gray well it's applying this red at 50 percent so it's not doing it at hundred percent it's only doing it 50 percent and so what I can do is I can hit default and if you see this, this is gonna be 100, so it makes it much brighter at 100%. Your gray value is going to correspond to what percentage of an adjustment you apply to the image. So let's go ahead and undo that just so we can get rid of it. So you can see right now, it's only on the bird, so we're just getting that area. And when we were working on the bird, remember we had this little area right here where it, it wasn't, um, done correctly when we made this selection. So we can manually apply that, right? We've got the color white, we're at 100%. I'm gonna make my brush smaller and I can just paint white and that's gonna remove it from that area. So now we're not gonna have that little area that's messed up and doesn't look good. So if I option click back on my mask and we go back, you can see now it's doing that perfectly. If I wanted to invert this, meaning I wanted the black areas to be white, which is the sky in the background, and the bird to not have the red on it, I can hit Command I, we're inverting that. And when all we did was change that mask, now the white is out here and the black is here. So remember, black hides the adjustment, white shows the adjustment. So if we go in here, 
we see that red is being applied to wherever there's white and wherever there's black, nothing is happening. So for some reason, if I want to plot a little bit of that red to this area, I could come over here, click on this, and we just want a little. So we're gonna to try to get it at about 25%. And I'm looking at this number right here, trying to get that at about 25%. All right, there we go. So now we're about 25%. So if I paint in this dark gray here, it's gonna apply a little bit of that red. So we, now we've got a little bit of that red because if we go in here and look, we can see there's that light gray. So it's applying just 25%. If I wanted a lot of it, I could come up here and go up to a whiter color and then do the same thing, paint it in. And you can see now it's applying that red color at a higher percentage, so we're getting more of it on that image. I'm gonna clear this away, so I'm gonna hit Shift Delete on a Mac, which just allows me to fill the mask with white, so it's applying everywhere. So we're not using the selection anymore. We're just applying 100% of this adjustment to this whole image. Command I, inverts it, now it's not applying anywhere. Remember I said there's two different ways and I showed you one and just so you can see it and it makes more sense, we'll still use this gray, whatever it is. So by using a brush and painting into the mask, you need to make sure that the color isn't selected. You can see it's got like these white brackets around it. That's saying not select. We want the white brackets around the mask area, not the image. Now, if I come in wherever I paint or apply that color, it's gonna apply that adjustment, which in this case is that weird red thing, all right? So that is a manual way to do it. And you could do that with any sort of tool that will manually apply it. So we're gonna just go back in time. One would be a gradient. So we've got a gradient. Our gradient is black to white that we can see down here. Go up here, make sure we get a true black to white. That looks good. So I come in here, I'm gonna draw this line. It's gonna make a gradient. You can see over here, the left, it's black. Is it being applied? And as we go further to the right, we're getting closer to white and it's applying more of that mask to this image. Now, one really thing that you can do inside of Photoshop is you can apply something that's called a luminance mask. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna make this mask look exactly like a black and white image. And that black and white image is either gonna look normal or inverted so it looks like a negative. And what that's doing is applying it differently. So one's gonna apply more to the shadows and one's gonna apply more to the highlights. So how do we create that? It is really, really easy. Now to create the luminosity mask, we need to make sure that this mask is white. So I'm gonna hit Command I and flip that back. Then we're gonna come on over here to image and we're gonna drop down to apply image. I'm gonna click on that. And the cool thing is you don't have to do anything basically except for either click the invert box or leave it unchecked. So if you look over here, you're gonna see where the mask was. It kind of looks like a black and white photo. This is applying this adjustment, but using just the luminosity of your image. So in this case, we are applying more highlight areas. And if you want to apply more to the shadow areas, you're going to click invert and you can see it does less in the highlights, more on the background. Uncheck invert and it applies the mask differently. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And what I'm going to do is option click on this and it's going to show us the mask. This is literally what the mask looks like. It looks just like a black and white image, but where it's whiter, it's going to apply more of the red where it's darker, it's not going to apply it at all. So if I turn it off, you can see that's how it's applying the image. Now I can click on this and hit Command I, which is invert. So if we go back and look at our mask by option clicking, you can see the mask looks like an old negative from film. So now where it's dark, right, it's not applying the red as much and where it's lighter, it's applying more of it because that's how masks work but it's in a grayscale, so it's very smooth in the process of what it does. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning. So I'm gonna hit File, and I'm gonna hit Revert, and what that does is just 
bring the image back to where it was. All right, so we've got the bird back. So in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna lighten the darker areas of the image. We're not going to make a selection in this because we're gonna use that luminosity mask. So if I want to lighten those areas, I can make a curves adjustment and I can lighten those shadow areas. We're gonna adjust this curve so it doesn't really affect whites. Don't worry about what it looks like. Isn't the point of this video. But right now I've got just a plain white mask. We don't want that plain white mask. And remember, we want it to just apply to the shadows. And that would be difficult and very time consuming to go in here and paint or apply to all those areas. That's where this luminosity mask comes into play. So we're gonna to go to the image, drop down to apply image. We know that if we check the invert, it's going to apply more to the shadow areas. We're gonna hit okay. And you can see we have that inverted mask, all right? So wherever it is dark, it's not applying that brightness adjustment and wherever it's lighter, it's going to apply. So right here, it's gonna apply a lot of that and right here, it's gonna do just a little bit because it's gray, right? Remember, the grays also affect how this works. So let's go ahead and option click this so we get back to the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is turn this on and off, all right? So what you're gonna see is how this mask is applying this brightness adjustment to this image. So if I turn it on, this is what it looked like. If I turn it off, that's what it looks like now. You can see more of that adjustment is being applied in the dark areas and where it's really bright, it's not even affecting it at all. So we're just doing a little bit in those bright areas and we're allowed to really open up that back area of the image. Now the cool thing is, what if you want this to be a little bit more extreme? Well, you can actually apply a curve to a mask. And one trick is you can't use a layer adjustment mask, you need to use the straight curve, meaning you would need to go to image, adjustments, curves. You could also use levels of brightness, it doesn't make a difference. Or in my case, I'm just gonna hit Command M, that would be Control M on a PC. And I'll bring this over here so you can see this. And as I open up the highlights, I'm changing the way the mask works. So I'm gonna hit Cancel, and I'm gonna apply this mask here so you can see what's happening. So Command M, and watch what happens as I do this. Remember, I'm not actually brightening the image, I'm brightening the mask. So I'm making, in this case, it apply more to certain areas because I'm brightening areas of the mask. I can come over here and increase that so I'm doing less of the white. So where there's white, we're getting less of that adjustment and where there's kind of a gray to dark, we're getting more of that adjustment. I can hit okay, I can click on this and now we're getting more of that brightening in this area because I've changed the way that that mask works. And if I go in and I brighten that, it's changing. So as we change the curve on the mask, it's changing how this adjustment is being applied to this photo via a luminosity mask. One issue that you occasionally run into is sometimes when you make an adjustment, it's just a little bit too bright. So if you do come in here and lower the opacity, it will lower the amount of this adjustment on this image. And so we can kind of refine that area there. Well, hopefully you learned a little bit about how masks work inside of Photoshop and the different ways to apply them. If you found this video helpful, it would be great if you could give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.